they take the photographs. Yeah. And they know where all those records are. <coughs> you know what yeah, you can do the next night. That, that was in uh, Orlando, and then when I tried to rectify it, I was talking to a lady in Oklahoma. Oh, yeah. No, nothing no, about Orlando. It's a defective now. It's a full business. That whole thing. It's. Well, anyway, uh, yeah, I think that's something that we would help us with. Yeah. It's on our. It's on our list. Thank you, sir. So any questions about any letter board or anything? The only question I have, Fred, is uh, we talked a little bit about it is with all these bills going out and everything coming back and everything else, are we pretty comfortable with our cash flow? Are we are we cushioned there? Or I, I wouldn't say comfortable, but uh, we're managing it. We're managing it quite well. Uh, but do we have a place, say, for instance, that we don't get paid. Do we have a place that we can get some money to pay our? We still have the line of credit from the bridge project. Uh, and, uh, so it's still in place. It's still in place. And how much? Used how it. much are, can we get there if we need to get money? I think that was that's a million. How much? Two and a half million. Five million dollar line of credit. So we, we could go there. If we need yeah. to five million. Five million. So we've got access to cash if we need it. But like I said, we've been we've been able to manage uh, manage the cash. Mm -hmm. um, I, I I check it every day. I, you know, you can get your bank statements online and I uh, I print them every day and put them in a worksheet and uh, know the balances and and manage around that. So far I've been able to do that. Successfully. Okay. Has been the over over. I think a comment that I'd make to you and your and our staff is the idea that you know, it's, what we're calling the spike in, in the responsibilities and the things that we need to do. I, I think our staff are adjusting very well and doing a great job trying to pick up things to uh, you know and we'll go back to our normal business at some point in time. But yeah, I guess you get the idea that you know when you ask for progress, it comes with. Uh, Certain extra responsibilities and type of things, and I think our staff, have, you know, yes, it's been great attitudes um, and <coughs> a lot of hard work. Yes, it is. It is. It's like for instance, the other day, Mr. Chairman, I, I, the reason I asked that question is I signed a check for eight hundred thousand the other day. Yes, you did. Uh, did you give it back? Did you give it back? Well, that's, that's my question. Well, is that, is, your is that flow? <laughs> is that flow here yet, or is yes. it? <coughs> that check, that check has cleared the bank. Yes, no, but I mean, did we get money? No. That's that's we, my question. Yeah. We, so we're, yeah. we're, we've made a check out for seven hundred ninety-six thousand dollars, yep. and we're now waiting for money to come from yes. wherever. That's right. So that's, that's where the when we start talking about the Accu software and the importance of of making sure all the information is uh, correct, up yeah. to date, on time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's critically important because once they start, all they have to do is ask a question, and it holds it up. Okay. And then the next day they can ask another question. So until the state is happy with that our numbers are correct, and that our quantities are correct, and that. Uh, We've got all the proper signatures in the right places. We don't get reimbursed, so that's what's so critical about watching that very closely. Uh, you know, we were able to uh, get some uh, our, our FAA grant uh, uh, money uh, from some of the projects at the airport. We've got those all caught up, and that money comes in very quickly, especially if everything is done properly and timely. And uh, uh, so. That's part of the. So the question of that other money that we could get if we need is there. And yes, it is. That's yes, it. That's what. Yeah. Comes with Thank interest you. charges. Comes with interest charges. That's what we're trying to avoid. Like you said, you don't know what's going to happen down there. You don't know. Well, it's over in this desk or it's over in that desk, that's and right. then yeah. when we find out that there's 84 of them there and yeah. we're the bottom one. That's right. And then and that's the, happened to us. And the that's person that sits at that desk is on vacation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and their yeah. replacement doesn't show up. Doesn't show up. <laughs> right. Okay, That's very, good. very good, thanks. Uh, John, give us your report. Sure. On the port side of things, uh, in an effort to get more wind uh, projects, the uh, chairman and I went to the American Wind Ener Energy Industries uh, Wind Power 2012 show in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, we met with, uh, in addition to having our own booth and uh, meeting a lot of interesting people at the trade show, uh, we had roughly 20 meetings with uh, third-party logistics company, 
companies, transportation firms, wind farm developers, manufacturers, and shipping lines. So it was a real good uh, trade show. So, uh, I don't know if you want to add anything. Well, I, I want to say uh, I, I learned a lot about the business. I, I learned about uh, what's, what's holding, uh, if one of them going to get a turbine project next year or whatever. Uh, it's kind of like the, the best example I could have. If you knew this year you're going to get an energy credit for putting windows in, and next year you weren't, you'd say, what would you do? Well, I'm going to put my windows in now. So this project to move forward now. So now what we're looking at is for uh, political leadership at the national level to look at uh, energy credits being extended. May happen at the end of this year, may not. Depends what the election is, whatever. But it seemed to me that the uh, the wind wind uh, power uh, aspect of it is kind of like status quo. A lot of things aren't happening as far as putting monies together and projects together, and it's kind of being really soft. Now that may happen, uh, something may happen between now and then, but 2013 does not look like a, a very good year. 2014, the people that, you know, John Orchestrate, whatever, there was obviously optimism that, that would the industry would reorganize itself. Some good things could be happening out of that, whatever. And there is interest in, in the Port of Augsburg, Jonathan. I want to tell you, what, I, I learned a lot about if you wait for people to come to you, guess what? Yeah. They're not coming. And, and John, I think, I did a great job of looking at clients and, and different aspects of all things of, of you know, people that we work <coughs> with who are involved in this industry. And we, uh, it was a big place. We did a lot of walking, John. I tell you, I did, I did. Eight hour days, nine, ten hour days, you know, walking, meeting people. I think, John, you, you, you've got to be committed, John. I don't want to public say Was there a general concern, though, the, without the wind credits, the, the federal credits yeah. for wind projects, that they might that put a damper on because they're not cost efficient without those credits yet? Yeah. And well, you know, it's investment money. Yeah. It's investment right. money. And somebody says, you know, I mean, we take a $400 million project, and somebody says, right off the top, I'm going to take $80 million from you. Oh. Or I'm going to save you $80 million. Oh. Yeah. I mean, that really, you know, creates a whole type of thing. And how do you make up $80 million? I mean, that's where the investors come in to say what makes sense where I want to be. Um, they have they had uh, political leaders, top political leaders there, representatives, there, you know, and they're all for the industry. They're all for, you know, renewable energy, and they all want this process. But um, that energy credit thing, that 1603, they call it, I think that's the number they remember saying is, we're kind of sitting back. It's going to drive the industry drive it right out of business if it doesn't stay. Because there's nobody's going to invest that kind of money if you yeah. can't get it. Because yeah. the, it's too long of a term to get your money back. Yeah. That's the problem. The so manufacturers best. that are in the United States are talking about layoffs and um, you know, some yeah. of the companies are saying you, you could see one industry drop by as much as 80% next year if they don't have to renew the production tax credit. We, we talked to you know a lot of different people, and, and you know one of the things we talked to a firm it was direct drive a new type of gearing system, so they're not loud. Talk to people make the blades, they're making different blades, a different contour, uh, having type of blade and, and design that we were you know you say you got to have I don't know say 15 miles an hour wind whatever you know whatever flow whatever. Now they're now they're having a blade technology with like much lower speed of wind. That the blade will still turn, even though it's just a whisper of wind. But I mean, that's where the gearing mechanism, stuff, whatever. And so they will move the blade. So I mean, and I asked you know a couple people, and you know like, well, what's the next technology? And the next technology is it smaller? We can have a different type of blade, whatever that would do whatever. And he says the word is bigger, bigger. You're going to make them bigger, bigger blades, bigger blades, wow. bigger. You know, yeah, and it's yeah. like wow. 180 feet now. Yeah, so the company we talked to, they're going to 195. You know, so I mean, so bigger, bigger is, is the aspect, whatever. The other thing that I learned also is you start to look at there's other technology for smaller type of blades, like say for us here, like if you want to have a, a a turbine here that can go on your roof, wherever you wish to, you know, put it, whatever. Some spin this way, some are a little like a, kind of reminds you of the old little propeller blade inside of a circle. I mean, that you direct it and turn or whatever. So there's a lot of things out there that you know people are looking at that may grab and may not grab. I mean, maybe it's something we can even look at ourselves. That you know, what do you want to do for there's a couple farms around here that I'm aware of that have their own individual. Uh, they're not anywhere near what we see, but they're turbines. Yeah. 
Yeah. And the blades aren't like as big as what we've seen, but they're, they're yeah. smaller scale. Yeah. But they use them just to generate because of the cost of uh, the farms yeah. and stuff and the electricity. And they, and they had some interesting maps to tell you where the wind consistent currents are or whatever. We talked to the Quebec people. We didn't talk to them on the water. I mean, on the water. Although, you know, the wind current goes up the river. And you know where, the, where their farms are or whatever. I mean, so we're right on the path. You're right, right on the path. path. One for yourself. Okay. But in the Midwest is where the big the big wind is. They, <coughs> the air comes over the mountains, you know, and uh, you know goes across the plains. That's that's where all the wind. That's where all the a lot of hot air in the Midwest. Yeah, there is hot air in the Midwest. <laughs> so it's interesting. It was very interesting. I, I really, uh, you know, I, Wade couldn't go because of the access road up. You know, we're uh, you know, doing things, whatever. And so I said I'd, I'd love to do it. So I, I, I really learned a lot. And I think uh, uh, thank staff for allowing me to go and to. Uh, I get my selling spiel too when I was there, so it was good. It was it was really good. It was a good uh, good working team. Go ahead, John. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. Yeah. Um, and it is interesting to know that we are actually working with some of the big names in, in the industry, like Vestas, Siemens turbines being handled, Transairs, ours third party logistics, Ball Ship, uh, Lone Star. Uh, we did get to leave while we were there too on a, a 2014 project in Vermont um, and we reported on that. I had a meeting, um, <coughs> a, a conference call with uh, the Cape Vincent Wind Farm. We're looking at that uh, with the developer there and making them aware of our facilities. <coughs> we had a meeting in Albany with uh, another developer who has a project down near Utica and some in Vermont as well. Um, gave a facility tour last month for a 2000, potentially 2013-14 uh, project that uh, they are leaning toward using this, this facility, so that looks positive. Uh, we're courting some uh, transportation equipment that would actually take place this year. It could be as early as July if they fix the cargo here. Uh, we provided a, a loadout uh, quote some additional heavy lift cargo. Um, I put uh, four buildings down at the port out to RFP and uh, if we do get any responses it'd be by the end of the month that's the deadline. Richardson Grain there's a, a new tenant down there uh, moved out their corn from last year and I'll be meeting with them either this month or next to uh, talk about next fall's crop. Steve mentioned we got uh, 19 rail cars of citrus pulp for Poulin grain, uh, 1,800 short tons. It's in storage now, it's quite a pile. Uh, and we're having aerial and ground photography taken for, you know, just to document the vessels that we've got in it for market purposes. That's going on. Today. Well, let, me, let me stop you there. Okay. Let, me, let me tell you how influential, and, and we will tell you, when we had those pictures. Uh, you know, with the Army Corps of engineers in Buffalo, and then all of a sudden they see your port and they look at two ships, and all of a sudden, well, that makes sense. All of a sudden, so that was really vital, vital information, or, you know, that really said, well, this is what it looks like, and it does happen. So I mean, I tell you what, whoever thought of that was uh, with the two ships, was that was really, really important. It really was. Proves your point. It you did prove our point. Well, it, it changes it from an academic a exercise to here it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, this is what it looks like. This is the dynamics of how we have to load, unload, and type of thing. So, we're, we're all done with it, John. Um, this week and next, we'll be working on another quote for inbound bulk cargo that's being explored by a St. Lawrence County company. That looks positive right now, but it's all going to depend on the pricing. It would come from the Midwest and uh, either move out of here by rail or by truck. <coughs> BCG Corpland, you've, you've heard them. We've got a lot of work to do there. Uh, we've released 800 square feet to DeFalsco. It's on the agenda for tonight. We have lease agreements in place with Tomar and FedEx. It'll be on your agenda for tonight. Wrote two uh, applications to the Northern Border Regional Commission, one for agricultural yeah. silos at the port <laughs> and wanted to purchase a railroad locomotive. Uh, got some training on the state's consolidated funding applications and those grants are due July 16th. We're still talking about those internally here, but we're going to be applying for. 
Um, I attended uh, the Montreal Manufacturing Technology Show with the IDA, and I'm working with the IDA in a fall cross-border trade event, which could be very positive, and that would be held here in Ardensburg, possibly in one of our buildings, uh, maybe at the Visitor Center. And uh, I'm working on a lead also for <coughs> about 5,000 square feet of space in the industrial park, and see how that works out. About 60% occupied in the Commerce Park and about 64% occupied. In the <coughs> One of the things that I, I kind of caught from the uh, report, John, you want to okay. digest whatever is, is obviously when we have our committees, whatever that. Um, you know, for sure the person will ever want to be, but we still have a real, I think a real serious commitment, not at all serious, but a, we just invested in some real thinking and process, whatever, and you know, so now we have to say to ourselves, what are we going to do and how are we going to move this project forward? And I thought, and I, I'd like to, uh, the two gentlemen out the end, I like Doug and Steve, I, I'd like you two guys uh, and myself be involved in this marketing committee look at this whole process and uh, and see where we want to go next and create some energy. I, I got other communities we want to be, but I think while well, I've got this thought going right now, I'd, and uh, and you two guys can decide who wants to chair that. You can decide who wants to chair that. I, I'll let you guys decide. I'll be part of it. But I think one of you two guys have a lot of experience in that in that regard, and I think that would be um, outstanding if you would to take that leadership role. Okay, guys? I appreciate that. Okay. Uh, any more comments for John? Okay. Very good. Uh, our own committee reports. Um, personnel committee. Well, we met the other day, or Wade, why don't you take us with that anyways? And sure. Uh, yeah. The personnel committee met the other day. Um, we uh, had several conversations throughout the month resolving a personnel issue. The issue is now resolved. The uh, personnel committee met, uh, talked about a variety of items, including the posting of the toll collector position, which is now public. Uh, once we get the applications in, we'll go ahead and conduct the interviews per the standard uh, questionnaire. We'll narrow, narrow it down to the top three candidates and bring the top three candidates to the committee. <coughs> When's them posted? When was that going to be advertised? Uh, it was advertised first day it was in the paper. It was <coughs> Wednesday, correct? This morning. This morning? This morning. Okay. Okay. I've been looking to see if it's in the yeah, We had to post it in for Is that Watertown in the, in the journal? Okay. The journal. Just journal only? It's two weeks. I wonder if we should post it in the Watertown. Last time we had 287 applications just in the general. Well, it don't matter how many applications we have, but I just want to make sure that it gets out to St. Lawrence County, and Augsburg Journal's not doing it. And I just I want to give everybody an opportunity to apply for it. So I'd, we'll I'd make like that to change. Thank okay, you. thank you. Anything else in personal summer intern? Uh, yes, thank you. The uh, summer intern was. Uh, uh, passed by the committee and it's before the board It's uh, item A3. Okay. Yeah, okay. Wait, was that necessary uh, because of all the activity in the court to, to add a person for the summer? Well, this is a combination of our summer intern and allowing some of our staff to take a vacation, uh, frankly. Well, that always helps, too. We've got to be able to cover for Patty and Tisha and also for uh, members of the accounting staff. Is that in addition to did we talk before about having an intern? Is this the same position? This or is, is it a this is the same thing that you and I were talking about previously. Yes. I'm assuming it's a college student or something. Yes. Yes, and the term. I mean, we'll we'll get to it when we get in there. But uh, term cuts off on August 24th. Okay. Yeah, September 3rd. Yeah. Uh, she got a two-year degree between Canton. Uh, uh, a few weeks ago, and is returning there. Uh, <coughs> the Facilities Committee uh, today. Fred, you want to take us for 
Well, it's really up to today, Mr. Chairman. We've got quite a few things that's, that I, I'd like to be able to bring to the board, but right now I have, there are still some outstanding issues. And But everything's going smooth. It's just getting it as, as Fred said, all, getting all the paperwork and getting everything put in line. And I want to thank staff for where we are with the excess road. That seems to be a little bubble of how the state wants you to do certain things. and. They, you know, it's. But I, I think everything's going good down there on that particular issue. Uh, we got to get to the the bottom line of <coughs> where it's all at with these quantities. I mean, because it's it, it, one of the biggest things that hit us down there. And I'll share it with everybody. Is and I don't have all the details yet. But that bog hole, which we all knew was there, we fixed the bog hole, but then never stopped. The bog hole never stopped. It just kept going and going and going. So I don't know all of the really cost of that yet uh, to bring back to you. So, But the rest of it's good. Uh, uh, the road is going in. The temporary road is amazing. It's just amazing that road is is, uh, <coughs> is perfect for us. And the windmills will get out of here on time, and that's the main concern we had. Maybe we've got to leave that road right there. <laughs> uh, that's the one over their property. If you, if you can convince them, <laughs> it, 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 we were there the other day, Doug. We were going to bring that back to you, but uh, we got shortchanged on that one. <laughs> was there anything in, ever in the contract with, uh, you know, was there a, a, a finish date in our contract for the road? access mm -hmm. roads? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the access road. Um, when you actually look in into the plans, there's September. A, a note in there that. Uh, Everything's going to be complete in September, and the uh, temporary access road was part of the original project. Yeah. That's one area that the board's probably going to have to look at when we get all these things done in another week or so. We might have to have a little meeting to bring that up, tell you where we're at. But uh, that's one of the areas that we've got in concern is, is you know, we got to do some. We may have to shift this trucking out of the port, or somehow fix the blacktop when it's going to go down. That's that's one of the areas, but the way it looks right now, from what we know <coughs> right, right this minute, we're still going to have the temporary road until the end, right to the end, so everything should go. Everything should go. He should, the, the, the contractor should finish on time. We just keep moving windmills out. Yeah. And uh, Fiaco done a tremendous job for us down there. Mm -hmm. yeah, tremendous yeah. job down there for us. And Tommy was, uh, I gotta, I'm gotta. i going to tell you something. I don't know how old that guy is. When I seen him pick up the end of that steel beam, I just drove away. Didn't want to I couldn't even <laughs> budge the beam and let him pick it up. <laughs> I know that man's got to be up in age. Tommy's the north side of 80. I got I could not believe early it. Picking that rail up. Got to be early age. Wow. Amazing. I'm, I'm telling you, Doug, I could not believe it. <laughs> He's done that kind of work for his whole yeah. life, though. That's all he's ever yeah. done. God bless him. God bless him. God bless him. I went down later and see if I could pick it. I couldn't. <laughs> you brought Sandy with you, didn't you? <laughs> I'll get your end, Sandy. I'll get your end. 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 We also had an approval easement uh, that was recommended to the full board for uh, uh, SLIC network solutions? Yes. Yeah. So we're looking at There's a railroad easement out there. Uh, anything finance report, Andy? Oh, we had a chance to look over the check registries and um, everything. Steve and I just had a few questions and Freddie answered them. Everything was in order. Uh, that's that's uh, Any unfinished business? Uh, uh, there's not. Okay. Uh, scheduled here July 12th. I see their next meeting. Uh, is that okay for everybody so far? And yep. Mr. Chairman, uh, talking about that July 12th meeting, uh, since we got the board here, uh, Wade has talked about those documents there that we're going to all have to go over once we put them all over. Okay. Uh, when we need to get the whole board involved in that to, to, to discuss that. Should we do that before the 12th of July? or? Oh, uh, I think we need to. I think you're right on that. Or do we need to do a morning meeting uh, on the 12th of July to, to, to be able to talk about that and maybe take some action if we want in the afternoon? Is, is, how's well, the I, schedule? I up for a whole day. I don't know if that's 
know, for somebody to do that. Um, I mean, there's some what how long do you think it's going to take us to go through every one of those? Well, what there is, there's a, a rating sheet there, and each of you individually, you know, read through the proposals and, and go through and rate them. Um, and then we basically sit in a room, decide who we want to bring in for the. Uh, well, we're going to need in the second session on some of that. Oh, definitely, because that's yes. matters leading to a point. Right. So. Right. And then we're going to need to approve mm -hmm. after that three down to the three. Yeah, the three who we're going to bring in yeah. to talk to. Right. Um, that's what I was talking about. Realistically, we probably won't get any of the. How long do you need to do that? Uh, to sit down and go through that thing in its totality, probably about two or three hours. Oh, yeah. Easily. I started this. There's, there's so, a lot what of I was wondering is the 12th of people. July is on uh, what, a Thursday again? Yeah, yes. I say Thursday. Yes. I'm wondering if we shouldn't meet like, you know, uh, 10 o'clock, get that behind us, get that out of the way, I should say, and then go to our regular meeting and be done with it. Rather than set up a separate day. I, I can't come in the morning on the 12th. I know that. And I can do afternoons or the day before, something like that for myself. You, or you want to do this first in the facilities committee, right? Yeah, well, it's got to be done in the full board, I believe, isn't it? Well, well that was not necessarily. I mean, you could do it as the facilities committee and then recommend the three uh, to the board, and we'll just call the three firms in and have them. I'd rather have the out. board involved in the whole thing because it's a, it's a big issue there. I don't want to miss anybody. I think you're right. I, think I don't right. want to miss anybody. I mean, Steve might be looking at these at home and see something that really do, that we miss, and then Steve will say, well, shit, you, that company got left out. There's nothing I could do. I don't want to do that. I think it's okay. I think it really needs to be looked at by the board. This is an important So can we have uh, a see. lunchtime meeting uh, in the, instead of a 3 o'clock start, have a noon start? That's fine. Whatever. Give us two early. hours. We could, have, uh, we could have lunch or whatever and uh, then good. carry on. Yeah. So we can do from 12 to 3. How's that? Well, whatever it takes that day. I mean, that's pretty serious stuff. Well, we can. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah. That's, that's not part of the regular meeting. Be, yeah. That would be. That would be executive session stuff. So, I mean, we can. We can let the press know that what, what we're going to do and go right into it. For he doesn't right. run down and then he sits outside. I just right. want to. That's let one him of the know. things that I was trying to say that when we're we, done, we, we could go maybe into the regular meeting, but I guess we can't. That makes sense. Do you know if it were a regular meeting scheduled for 12 o'clock, we could go into executive session and then come back to the regular meeting right. and continue rather than waiting until 3 o'clock. Steve, why don't you advertise it as starting for an executive session and the other meetings start immediately thereafter? Uh, yeah. And we figure about two and a half hours probably to go over to that anyway. That's a good idea. And you're going to have lunch, so three hours would be good. Yeah. Okay. Fine. So we should be close to <coughs> two thirty, three o'clock. Okay, good. Is that all right with you, Mr. Chairman? Very good. I like your thinking. And what we'll do too is we <laughs> will get the uh, rest of the copies in here of the nine proposals, so that way the other board members that aren't members of the facilities committee have both the CD and the proposals before you leave today. Okay. Okay, business items. I had a fairly uh, light agenda this evening. Um, I will note as we go down through the agenda, item B2 has been uh, removed just as we go through here. Um, <coughs> item what? Agenda item B2, B2 has B2. been removed. Okay, over on page four, we have agenda item A1. This approval of an authorization letter and municipal resolution with the Indian Bank. You haven't seen this before. This is new. The community Bank has changed their procedures where wires can no longer be done uh, through a phone call from the office. So what needs to happen is either Fred or myself um, needs to go down to, actually physically down to the community bank each time we have a wire transaction inconvenient we're looking at alternatives how to address that um, but that being said we need to continue to function and deal with the operations as, as uh, we, we presently deal with let me ask you a question does the other bank do it differently than yes 
Is this the only bank that does it this way? This is, well, this is the only one that we're aware of. This is the only bank that we deal with, but I think other banks do it differently. That's yeah. what I'm saying. I, I think I other banks can bank initiate the wire around. online, I believe. What is their reason for changing the procedure? There's something coming down here they for everybody. They said that, that, was, uh, that they had experienced fraud and yeah. uh, so on, and that they uh, uh, just require either a municipal resolution or an in person signature. And, we, I, and uh, the thinking was that that was so inconvenient. <coughs> right, right now, we, we only do one wire a month. So I think, like this, for instance, like that uh, check that you signed, right. I think someday we may want to wire some of those payments. Uh, somebody may, you know, we may have a contractor that insists upon it. That's uh, where we live in. Really. And that's the world we're living in. Right. And we, and so having to run to the bank every time you want to do a wire uh, is uh, burdensome, I think. But the thing is, is there, I believe there's something coming down on this that you're going to have to do that. I think it's going to go the other way. I think uh, if you have a online signature, in other words, I, you can't get to our website without all of the right passwords oh, okay. and all that, that you would initiate it online, and that, and that would do it. Well, one of the things that we were set up on this, and that's the dangerous part about this, but what happened was we set up a separate account. So we know what's in that account. So, you know, for the feds right. taking their money out. Because if they can get their, into the general account, they could take your whole account. And you wouldn't even know it. So I don't know what to this, but whatever. Whatever you just want to do. Community has done this for a while because we all have, well, Frank, do you, do you use community? We use community, to use wire, but I, my, my office is right next door. Yeah, well, what do you, what do you they, actually had, <laughs> they actually had me sign some, locked them in their desk what, what door, but they make us do? physically go for our IOL, and like Frank and I are the only two that can actually sign on ours. I, I, I sign, and it go, and then the girl takes it over yeah. and it's done. Yeah, and that's but my signature's on file because I'm on file on my account. But that's what we were doing, and they won't yep. allow that anymore. I was signing it, and we were having someone deliver it to the bank. Yeah. And, and they said, no more. I no. have to come in and sign it in front of them. And that's community's new, that's their new policy. We slide because we worked with them for so long. But that is their new policy. And if you get a new loan officer, it will make me truck out there. But that's the only thing lucky is somebody from my office can walk across. Yeah. They're usually... It's well, about not even so, Fred, what's this resolution do? What this resolution will do is make it so I can sign it and Jimmy Dupree can take it to the bank. Somebody can take it to the bank. I haven't got to run to the bank to sign okay. it. I can sign it okay. and okay. Uh, get it done. I'll make a motion to approve the resolution. Second. Second. Get the call. call us. Any other discussion? <laughs> I will. Um, an appropriate, uh, one other, uh, no, an appropriate limit needs to be set. On there because it's a wide open limit right now. Uh, and the resolution is not proper in front of us. Is that what you're telling me? No, the resolution is proper. We just need your guidance on what that is. Our recommendation well, is two and a half, two and a half million dollars, is what we would need to normally. So that needs to go in the resolution. Uh, no, it actually needs to go on the form on when the everything's form. all done. The resolution is proper in its present mm -hmm. form. You just want to limit it on the bank's form. On the bank's end. Yes, yeah. on the bank. Yeah. Because it shouldn't, in good practice, it shouldn't be. Oh, that's, that's you make the recommendation. What you think? No, it's best that you know what it is. Well, yeah, hundred dollars would be enough. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no. We need money left to find you in Rio. So yeah, that's right. <laughs> I don't forget my plane ticket. I'll join you there. Yeah. <laughs> so if there's no okay. objection, okay. I'd like to propose two and a half million in there. Okay, and that's fine. I, I'm interested in, and in this seems to be going against. What I'm finding with other banks is, as we're doing our audited with school districts and so forth, I'm interested in why it's headed in this direction. It seems to be taking some of the automation out of the process. Yeah. Yeah. What, you know, and there's not there's ease been of banking anymore. <laughs> some classic cases of uh, people from out of the country reaching into yeah. accounts and, and pulling funds out, mm -hmm. uh, and they've been combating that with saying, let's not have this particular machine connected to the network. This machine goes to the bank and it's all it's used for. Because the wire transfers go to the Fed. They go from the bank's location to the <coughs> Fed and from the Fed to wherever it's supposed to be. Even if it's right, even if it's can't, well, it doesn't go direct from bank well, to bank. How does PayPal work? I mean, I've got a credit card and I got PayPal in the, in the, uh, the person says I only take PayPal. 
Well, why would they take my American Express card, but I have to go through PayPal? I mean, what is that? What is the difference? I don't. I don't. I mean, that's really what they're saying here, because I don't really trust you, but I'm going to take an extra way of making sure that you go through this process to <coughs> make it happen. I, the only thing I can say with the banks is that they're concerned about other people reaching and taking yeah. out money. That's why a lot of the banks are segregating uh, how they wire. In other words, yeah. the, the computer that they may wire from to the Fed is not hooked up to a central system. Right. It's, it's an independent computer. In other words, you can't tap it because you're not online. Yeah. You get one line, goes to the Fed. Well, I, I know one thing it said in, in my credit union, it said international accounts. Don't even think about it. Don't yeah. even think about wiring money or, or you know, yeah. buying something. Don't even think about it. I'm not going to do it. I mean, I'm talking, I mean, I've, I've been uh, compromised a couple of times with people from Saudi Arabia and, uh, and uh, Indonesia. And I said, what the heck? That's <laughs> did, because you're a you high go, roller, though. Huh? Did you, did, you, did you go to Hong Kong? I said, I don't think so. You know, wow. but so, I mean, so that's, something's happening somewhere or whatever. It, it, well, they are. I got a call one time when I was on a road trip to California. My wife called me and said, uh, did you, somebody's using your credit card in Chicago. I said, yeah, that was me. I was there last night. <laughs> but they called up and checked. Oh, yeah, they did. I didn't so get a chance yeah. approval. <coughs> well, well, anyways, I, will, uh, I will tell you this. Right now we do one wire a month for around $11,000. Amen. Okay. Yeah. okay. So it's uh, not really a problem for you and Wade to take care of that. It's a problem to have to go to the bank yeah. to do it. But yet, if the way this resolution is, you'll be able to send Jimmy. Is that what you're telling me? Or yes, or yes. anyone, or anyone that's going by the bank can stop and drop it off, like we've been doing for the last. Oh, well, I've been here. That's Even though like. they're dropping off what you signed. What I signed. Yes. Just all right, we have a motion, we have a second. Uh, any further discussion on it? Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you very much. Okay, on page five, there's approval of a lease supplement with uh, Dan Dodge. Uh, this is for the Bridge Administration Building. And the lease expires September 30th, 2012. 170 square feet in BAV here at the rates, terms, and conditions you see before you. Dan's been with us quite a while, hasn't he? Yes. Yeah. And uh, the map is on page six. Is there any? Did we get an increase on this one? Yes. What was it? Three percent. And he also brought in another doctor with him that uh, may need his own space eventually. So. We an increase from him? No. Yeah. Yeah. I have a motion, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion. Second. 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 Time. Do you have a discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay, agenda item A3 is appro approval of a uh, agreement with Penske. This is for a summer intern uh, to in the accounting department to cover office staff during summer vacations. The period would start June 11th, 2012 through August 24th.